Hey guys, Ms. Peterson here, and welcome to your Physics in the Universe lecture on the Big Bang Theory. Okay, so the Big Bang Theory is a theory about how the universe started. And before we can understand that, we need to know how we study the universe. Okay, so we study the universe using spectroscopy. Now, spectroscopy is the study of the light, aka electromagnetic radiation, not limited to just the visible light we see, but also including infrared rays and ultraviolet rays and gamma rays and radio and all of that. And we don't have the technology to visit other stars or other galaxies and collect samples and bring them back to Earth to study them. All we have are telescopes. So we use telescopes to gather the light and use spectroscopy to analyze it. And those spectra that we look at in spectroscopy can fall into three categories. If we're just looking at a star, um, like you might have seen if you used a spectrometer and looked at the sun, you would see a continuous spectrum. All of the wavelengths of light that make up white light without any breaks in between. Now, uh, in our spectroscopy lab, we looked at some gas tubes and looked at them through the spectroscope and saw emission spectra. So if you have something glowing, it will emit certain wavelengths of light. And that's what we see there. And then there's also the absorption spectra. This is what we look at when we look at things like red shifts and things like that. So that's when you have something glowing passing through a cold a colder gas, for example, the dust clouds around stars or the clouds that make up the universes, that gas will absorb some wavelengths of light, creating these dark bands that are called the absorption spectra. So that's the emission, the light emitted by the element or molecules, and then the, oops, then the absorption is the light absorbed by those molecules. And these spectrum are specific to the chemical that creates them. They're like a fingerprint of a galaxy, okay, showing what is absorbed and emitted and all of that. And that's how we study the universe. One of the first things that we found from looking at these absorption spectra was that the universe was expanding. So how do we know that the universe is expanding? Well, we know that from looking at absorption spectra from distant galaxies. Okay? What we noticed was that in all directions that we looked, light from the distant galaxies has been redshifted. Now, what that means is, let's go ahead and oop, zoom in there to see. Okay, if we're viewing the spectrum at rest, we know of the characteristic lines that it will um, have. Okay, where for Oops, not want to be in highlighter. Yep. Okay, if we are looking at these spectra, okay, what we see is that they're all shifted, shifted slightly to the right. Okay, that is red shifted. They're shifted right toward the longer wavelengths, the long end of the spectrum where if a galaxy was moving toward us, they would be shifted slightly to the left. You can tell these lines are slightly to the left of where we expect them to be. That is the blue shift, which is what would happen if the galaxy was approaching us. The only one we really see this in is the Andromeda galaxy, our nearest neighbor. Now, everywhere else we look, light has been the red shifted, okay? And that's due to the Doppler effect, okay? As that light source moves away from us, the wavelength increases, and we call that the redshift. This was discovered in the early 1900s by Edwin Hubble. He noticed that all galaxies were moving apart and was the first to publish that the universe was expanding. So Hubble's law, uh, what he discovered was that the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it is moving away from us. Okay, And that is the expansion of the universe. The next piece of evidence from the Big Bang Theory came from the CMBR, or the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation. There's a picture of it. Um, and before I tell you what it is, I want to tell you the story of how it was discovered, because it's really interesting. So there were these two astronomers that were working out of New Jersey, and they uh, wanted to... Um, look at the microwave radiation using their radio telescopes. Radio telescopes uh, are into the radio wave and the microwave range of that spectrum. Okay. They wanted to look at it from a certain star cluster. And so they were trying to calibrate their telescope by pointing it at empty spaces in sky where there shouldn't be any radiation. 
Okay, there shouldn't be any light coming from there. So they pointed it, and they got a signal from their detector. And they were like, uh, there shouldn't be a signal there. So they moved it and pointed it somewhere else. There was still a signal. Pointed it somewhere else, still a signal. There was a signal coming from everywhere. So then they were trying to figure out the source of this interference with their data. So they thought, okay, well, we're in New Jersey. We're pretty close to New York City. New York City has a lot of stuff going on in it. Let's see if that's what it is. So they went closer. They got all of the radio signals coming from New York, and they tried to filter them out of their data, and it didn't work, okay? New York was not causing their interference. So then they became convinced that it was the pigeon poop, okay? Pigeons were pooping on their telescope and causing their signal to get messed up. So they... Uh, installed little speakers that would emit a sound to keep the pigeons away, and they tried to fence it off and add the little pokies, um, and they scrubbed and they scrubbed and they scrubbed their telescope to try to get rid of the pigeon poop and fix their signal. No luck. Meanwhile, over at Princeton University, just a few part away, astronomers had already theorized about the cosmic microwave background. Uh, this was post-Edwin Hubble, so they already had an idea that the galaxy was expanding and that if this was true, there should be this radiation left over, but they couldn't find it. Their telescopes weren't sensitive enough. These two astronomers knew each other, the guys that were concerned about the pigeon poop interfering with their signal, and the guys over at Princeton looking for this background radiation left over from the Big Bang. And the guys concerned about the signal, went to the guys at Princeton for help. And we're like, hey, this is what's going on. We can't get rid of it. They were like, uh, yeah, that's because that's not interference. That's not noise in your signal. What they had accidentally discovered was the cosmic microwave background. Okay, What it is is that everywhere in the universe, there is a small amount of energy present in the form of microwave radiation. Okay, This is the radiation left over from the Big Bang. And it was discovered by accident, okay? We love in science when things are discovered by accident because it means we weren't looking for it. Uh, we tend to find things that we're looking for that confirm what we already believe. That is a side effect of our human brain. But this one wasn't. We weren't looking for it, okay? So that's a good clue that it actually is real. And from the energy of that radiation, it matched what they expected. And the temperature of the universe and the estimate of the age of the universe from this radiation agreed with those that matched Hubble's law and the expansion of the universe. So we can see this oldest light in the universe, okay? This light formed when the universe was a hot, dense ball, okay, only about a couple light years across. And then through time, it's been spread out with the expansion of the universe. So now it's just this chill little microwave wavelength. Okay, with an energy of 2.7 degrees Kelvin or 2.7 Kelvin, negative 270 degrees Celsius. And we can estimate that age of the universe, which is about 13.8 billion years. Okay. Now, there's one more piece of evidence for the Big Bang Theory. That is the elements that are most common in the universe. Using spectroscopy, we figured out that 99% of the universe is just hydrogen and helium. Okay, that is what exists there. Now, these are the two most simplest elements on the periodic table. All other elements have to be created inside stars as a result of gravity working and fusing these elements together. When you have more gravity, you can get more complex elements. Now, before the universe was small and everything was together, there should have been a lot more gravity okay, to create those heavier elements. And if the universe has always been in existence then there should have been plenty of time for these heavy elements, heavier elements to be created. No reason that the simplest should be the most common. Okay, So this predicts that the early universe was way too hot for atoms to form. It took time for it to cool and expand enough to allow gravity to start fusion, start powering the stars, uh, which is what we're going to learn more about next unit. Right. But that is another one of the main pieces of evidence for the Big Bang Theory, which is that current accepted explanation of how the universe began. This little graphic describes it, but its basic tenets is that the universe is about 13.8 billion years old. Okay, It started as a single point, which we call the singularity, Okay, that rapidly expanded to create all of the matter and energy and space and time and everything. Okay, 
And the early universe was really, really hot. It was nothing like the world that we are used to today. It was hot and dense and consisted of particles like quarks and photons and neutrinos popping in and out of existence, okay, governed by quantum physics. It wasn't even until about 400 million years later that we even got stars starting to be developed, okay? So that's the Big Bang Theory. So can you explain what the Big Bang Theory is? and how each of these pieces of evidence supports it? I hope so. Okay, cool. Okay, cool.